the histories than the women who didn't get heart disease. The only difference between the two groups was their belief. And uh, there have been studies of psychiatric patients who've had personality disorders where one personality had specific diseases such as diabetic and one did not. And whenever they were in the personality that did not have the uh, uh, disease, uh, but when, once they became the personality that had the diabetes, uh, they literally became diabetic. Uh, now, uh, you know, obviously multiple personality disorder has become controversial for some reason because there's this, uh, uh, well, there's this uh, theory that it, it, it's not, it doesn't really exist, um, but uh, that's something for another time. Uh, but, the fact of the matter, there's documented studies of people who have these different personalities and the different personalities take on different illnesses. Fascinating. So nocebos can result in sickness and even death when the patient expects such an outcome. Interestingly, the nocebo complaints aren't random. They tend to arise in response to the side effect warnings on the actual drug or treatment. the mere suggestion that a patient may experience negative symptoms in response to a medication uh, may be a self-fulfilling prophecy. For example, if you tell a patient treated with placebo, with a placebo, that he might experience nausea, he's likely to feel nauseous. But if you suggest that he might get a headache, he might. In other words, power of suggestion is powerful. Uh, now, this sort of effect has been used, you know, for centuries, uh, you know, among Haitians in their belief in voodoo uh, and other uh, indigenous cultures in which, uh, you know, people are cursed and told that they're going to, uh, to die. Uh, and believe that. <coughs> So it's definitely a very powerful uh, ability of the mind. So uh, more support uh, for the idea that beliefs translate into physiological changes comes from uh, laboratories studying the field of molecular biology uh, this field is called epigenics, meaning control above the genes. So what's above the genes when we talk about epigenic control? The mind. Now you can't change your DNA with your thoughts, but you may be able to utilize the power of your mind to alter how your DNA expresses itself. Traditional genetic determinism uh, supports the idea that everything in the body is controlled by our genes. That essentially our genes are our destiny. Now if this is true, we're literally the victims of our genes. Heart disease, breast cancer, alcoholism, depression, you name it. If it runs in your family, you're basically going to get it. So this genetic determinism has been, uh, you know, uh, a, a standard in uh, you know, medical thought for quite some times, but it, it, as it turns out, changing your thoughts can actually change how your brain communicates with the rest of your body, and thereby altering the body's chemistry. It's not just your brain that is subject to this kind of plasticity. While you can't change your DNA, uh, cell biologists uh, assert that you may be able to change how your DNA is expressed based on what you believe. The genetic code is like a blueprint that can be interpreted in a million different ways. So, epigenetic control 
comes from the mind uh, and how we think about ourselves and our bodies. So it's very important and I don't want to say the words positive belief. I think if you get away from I think if you consider everything that is happening to you is something that you're creating and something that you can change and that you're creating it for some reason to experience something and then when you don't need to experience that thing or if you just need to experience the power of your ability to change something then you will do it. So, I, you know, it's fascinating and again, verifiable, replicable science that is telling us this. And yet somehow, somehow, when you mention it or when you talk about it, people still, and I don't mean just people, I mean scientists, trained scientists, uh, just poo-poo the whole thing. It's the same situation with, uh, you know, verifiable uh, science that shows us the abilities of human beings to communicate telepathically. It's there. It's been done for years. The science is there. And yet somehow... doesn't get accepted by mainstream science in the way that any other kind of research with the kind of results that that this research has would, would be accepted. If they were doing research on um, the efficacy of, uh, of of aspirin to uh, you know protect the heart and you got the kind of results you got uh, in tests on uh, people's uh, psi abilities, it would be perfectly acceptable. But because of the level of disbelief is so high, the fact that they just don't want to believe it, the only way you could even begin to make inroads with certain types of people is if, is if you show them, I don't know, two people, uh, you know, having a a discussion in their brains uh, you know it, it, it's just anyway I digress so it's in it's important to have a sense of uh, empowerment I think that's even more important than uh, the idea of positive versus negative certainly uh, if you've Obviously, if you think negative thoughts uh, about your uh, your illness, then that will have certain effects. And if you think positive thoughts about your illness, that can have certain effects. But if you can go beyond those, uh, you might be able to be even more effective. But it's fascinating, and we'll go on and we'll talk about different aspects. I think next time we'll talk about how... Uh, your doctor and how your doctor relates to you can have an enormous effect on your health. But we are running short on time now. So, I shall bid you adieu and hope that you Use the power of your mind to great effect to help the world.